yes, repos are exploding. Uh, this the like biggest default rate that I think we've ever seen as far as percentage wise. But what we gain in repos, we more than 10x lack in dealer trade ins. Um, so what I mean by that is when I go to an auction, I'm a used car dealer. When I go to the auction, um, the majority of cars that actually move through the system at these auctions are new car dealer trade-ins. So when you go to buy a new car and you trade in your old car, that car typically doesn't hit the new car dealer's lot. It is immediately sent to the auction. But because these new dealers are having a hard time selling their vehicles, that means that they're having um, a massive deficit of, of these used cars that they're actually sending to the auction. So the inventory at these auctions is still very low because we are lacking um, these these new car trade-ins and we desperately need that to get a big move down for used cars. And that's why you're seeing a slow trickle down. Like I think last month in wholesale prices, it, they went down like 5%. And the demand that we're seeing across new cars and used cars is just getting crushed right now. The Fed's doing its job. And uh, so we sh should be seeing like a big whoosh down in price. But the reason why we're not seeing this whoosh down in price is because there's no inventory because new car dealers aren't selling. And if they're not selling, they're not getting trade-ins. And if they're not getting trade-ins, they're not sending them to the auction. And if they're not sending them to the auction, then used car dealers like me, we're not able to buy them. And that's keeping the, um, the prices of these used cars stubbornly high. Um, even though a lot of these used car dealers are, they're just, they're, they're not selling and they're, they're going through some hard times, but the ones who actually are selling, they're still fighting for a limited supply um, of these used cars. So that's, uh, that's why, yes, repos are going to help a little bit, but they, they won't even touch the deficit that we have um, in the, the, the trade inside that we're not seeing. 20 K in your pocket. You need to buy a car that can drive 15,000 miles per year plus in commuting in commuting what are three options you would advise to look at your content is awesome my my answer if if you don't give me any kind of uh, parameters on what you should buy i'm always going to default to a toyota camry i think they're the best cars made i think they're most the the most reliable cars made and you can definitely get you a great toyota camry for twenty thousand dollars or under but you need three options so i would look toyota camry i like the honda accord you know what Subaru is growing on me? I think you can get let's because we'll throw something that's like all wheel drive in there too, just in case you need it wherever you are. Um, like a like an Outback, yeah, some something around. So we'll throw that in there. Um, I'll throw you a fourth in there, like a any kind of Mazda sedan. I'm I'm, I'm okay with too. Um, just a, so for twenty thousand dollars, you're gonna have to buy something used. So whenever I recommend you buy something used, always get it checked out by. I don't care where you're buying it from. Get it checked out by your trusted mechanic before you purchase this vehicle. Even at $20,000, you can buy a turd really quickly. So I want to make sure that you're safe in your car. You get it checked out by your mechanic that is going to look at it like they're buying it for their mama, like they're buying it for themselves. That's bigger than even whatever car you're you're trying to look at is that your mechanic looks at it before uh, you decide what you're, what you're getting. Looking for a used car under 8000 should I wait until the end of the year or buy now and negotiate the price? What I want you to start doing is... There are deals to be had, but you're going to have to find them on the independent level. So you're going to have to, when I say independent, not independent dealer, you're going to have to find them individual is the, is the word that I'm looking for. So go on Facebook Marketplace and try to find an individual that's selling their car and then try to negotiate it. Now you have, I mean, to the, to the end of the year, if you're, if you've got that time, you can start looking now and try to find you a deal. Um, but just don't, don't feel like you need to buy something. Now you have plenty of time. And over the next six months, you're going to be able to find a deal somewhere. And prices will be better towards the end of the year. But even if you're buying from an individual, you might be able to find somebody that doesn't really know what their vehicle is worth. Um, and I would rather you buy from an individual than I would you buy from a dealer anyway. Do you see an end to the market adjustments on sports cars happening ever? Why are the companies not just making more cars? Yeah, they're, they're going to have to. So the the toys are something that, that falls pretty fast during a recession. I mean, you if it's a recession, if it's not a recession, whatever. It's not for, for me to decide. It's not for me to judge or whatever. There are definitions, but... There we'll are definitions, but we're not using them in right now for whatever reason. Uh, but anyway, so sports cars are something that, that usually does fall pretty hard during a recession. But the reason why um, a lot of them aren't falling like they typically do um, going into recession is because there was so much 
funny money that was just put into the system and speculative assets and uh, things that like Lambos, like, I mean, these Mustangs, you see like, like all these, all these Hellcats being, being repoed and whatever, but people got, got tons and tons of money and there were, there were easy loans out there to get. So they went out and bought a lot of these things and they just haven't started losing them in a high enough quantity yet um, to be able to push the prices down. But I, I really think, I really think it's coming. So yeah, hold on. I do think sports cars are going to come down and they're going to come down in a big way. So you might be watching this and not even know this, but this is a brand new channel. So if you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, it would really, really help me out. Uh, will buy here, pay here dealers do better as the auto market downturn? So that I get that question a lot and I am actually curious about, I know that they got hammered in right after 2008 because i mean everyone defaulted we uh, the housing market overshadowed the auto market um obviously because that was a much much bigger deal but the the car market got hammered too and a lot of these loans there was a lot of repos they, ha they had to do that the problem with the buy here pay here places right now is that they're they're selling tons and tons of cars because people can't get loans uh, for these more expensive cars. So what ends up happening is they can come up with a thousand nine ninety five down, then come up with twelve hundred dollars down, whatever they need to come up with. And they get in these cars um that maybe they couldn't afford, but these buy here pay your dealers, they're not checking credit. They're not they're not um really checking people's income for the for the most part. They're seeing a piece of paper say, oh yeah, you got a job, you can give us this money down, whatever. Because they know that if people default they miss one payment. I know it's different in different states, but in North Carolina, I think you miss one payment. Then ten days later, they can go and pick up your car. So they're they're really banking on on that when they're selling these this volume of cars right now. Because I mean, they're they're getting a higher volume of these customers because they can't qualify for a lot of these loans. Um, so I'm really cu curious to see what happens in this environment. Um, as it gets a little bit worse, as people start to default more on these on these cars to see if a lot of these buy here, pay here dealers that have a lot of money on the road um, get a lot of these cars back and what condition they're in. Because if they're in halfway decent condition, but we know that I mean, we know that repos tend to get beat up. People don't take care of them, right? Because they know that they're not going to make payments on them. Um, but if they get enough back of them that they can resell, then some of them be okay. It depends on how well they vet their actual customers that they're selling these cars to. But I think the good buy here, pay here dealers, and when I say good, I don't think there's really very many actual good buy here, pay here dealers. When I say good, I mean the ones that actually vet customers, the ones that are doing their due diligence to try to get um, customers that they feel like can actually afford their cars and they're not just trying not to get down payments and get a customer in a car no matter what. Uh, I think those will probably do fine, but the ones that are a little bit more predatory, I think those are the ones that are going to get hurt and they deserve to really. Um, I've talked a lot on my channel about the, the predatory nature of a lot of these buy here, pay here dealers. And I mean, they deserve to go down and in environments like this, it really shows the more predatory uh, lenders out there, the subprime of the subprime of the subprime that are not doing their research um, on these consumers that they're lending the money. Those are the ones that tend to get hurt the worst and the fastest. And they're the ones that are going to go out of the business, out of business, but the ones that actually do do their homework on the, the consumers and try to at least make it the best possible fit for their customer. I know buy here, pay here is not a good fit for any customer, but the ones that try at least to, to, meet them somewhere in the middle. Those are the ones that will succeed and they'll probably do well in this environment, but the the pred really predatory ones probably won't. You are a useful source um, of information and real good on you. Just my thought, we should be hybrid before EV. Your thoughts? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you're talking about hybrid across the market. Um, Yes and no. The, the problem with a lot of these hybrids, especially with the batteries, they don't they don't hold up. So the batteries that, the, that are coming out in these Teslas, they're rated to greatly outlast any of these hybrid batteries and what we run into in the used car market at least we've bu we bought quite a few hybrids i know we've had a honda accord hybrid recently we had a kia optima recently anyway but we bought them and the, the batteries are bad and it ends up where the battery is going to cost more than what what the car actually is is worth so um, that's the problem with hybrids, at least that we're running across. And you really can't get an adaption of 
a hybrid or an EV throughout the whole system until you have some sample size of the used market working too. And these cars, these gas cars that we can sell that have 150, 200,000 miles on them and still run for a long time, um, particularly like these Camrys and these in these uh, like four cylinder Hondas, um, you have a sample size of these cars lasting 300, 400,000 miles, especially more towards the south than the northeast because rust is the issue up there and they'll just disintegrate after 100, 150,000 miles. But here in the south, especially where I'm in North Carolina, we don't deal with any kind of rust, so they can last 400,000 miles. Uh, because rust just doesn't eat them away. And um, you have a sample size of that with the gas cars, but with the with the hybrids, when you get to that point where it's like 200,000 miles, it's time for a battery. And at that point, the what they're worth is not actually worth putting the battery in them because it's, the battery just costs more than, than what the actual vehicle is worth. Um, so that, those are my thoughts there. Just as far as the used market goes, um, new is going to be a different story because people that are buying new, they're, they're not expecting to keep these cars um, to, to where they have 200, 250,000 miles on them. But I still think for a wide scale adaption of a hybrid of an EV, you're going to have to see the used car market kind of work through the system and have a sample size of uh, being able to buy and sell these, these EVs and these hybrids. What car would you get if the price isn't an issue? I think all oh, the 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 fast Tesla after oh, today no. maybe no no you're no. talking about the plaid oh yeah what are you gonna, like where are you gonna drive fast like it, tell I me how that's know. gonna ever be a good decision it's not a good decision it's a very I bad just decision. I drove a Tesla today and that's that's where my, my brain is um no yeah it's it would be probably the new Sequoias this probably would be one of those if it if there wasn't a I'm not paying a hundred and ten thousand dollars for a, for a car though okay. That would be it. That would be it. The new Sequoia. Much better answer. I there like you go. that one. 